its glower. Longing to escape the relentless noise of the city life, imagine a place where the only soundtrack is the symphony of the crickets and the gentle whispers of the woods. Welcome to a serene sanctuary hidden deep within the heart of Jolda Bara National Park. Join us as we embark on this enchanting journey together. This summer, we embarked on an unforgettable journey to the mystical land of Thunder Dragons, Bhutan. Welcome to the first episode of our adventure series. Our day began at 6.45 a.m. on a Friday morning as we set off from our home in Damdam. Despite living just 20 minutes away from the Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose International Airport, we aim to arrive early to ensure a smooth check-in process. Fortunately, the queue at the counter was short and we quickly made our way to the waiting lounge. As usual, I was travelling with my mom this time. Since it was early morning, most of the shops inside the airport were still closed. I managed to grab a quick snack before it was time for our boarding. As the aircraft taxied down the runway, the engines roared to life and we felt the thrilling anticipation of our upcoming adventure. As we ascended, the sprawling cityscape of Kolkata gradually unfolded beneath us. The vast expanse of Kolkata's skyline transformed into a patchwork of vibrant colors and textures. The feeling of soaring above the clouds with the promise of new adventures ahead was a perfect start to our journey. The aerial distance between Kolkata and Bagdogra is approximately 280 miles and took about 1 hour 15 minutes to complete. We were travelling with Amideva Tours and Trek, a local Bhutanese tour company specialising in inbound tours. They arranged for airport pickup and drop off to Jaldapara on day 1. On day 2, the same vehicle would take us to the Joygaon Fulshini border. The distance from Bagdogra to Jaldapara is approximately 135 km. We would travel primarily via NH27, then on to NH517 and then NH17 reaching our destination in about three and a half hours. After a nine to ten years hiatus, traveling through North Bengal felt incredibly refreshing. However, the hot and humid weather was a challenge. Despite heavy rainfall in the past week, which was widely reported, the conditions outside were as uncomfortable as in Kolkata. Unfortunately, we had to keep the windows closed and the air conditioning on throughout the journey. Tista didn't have much water, but still it was beautiful. Finally, the most awaited moment arrived, when the landscape unfolded into endless stretches of tea gardens, each one appearing lush and vibrant. They were blanketed in a fresh, dewy sheen due to the recent rains, making the entire scene look almost surreal. The British planters were the pioneers of tea cultivation in the Duars and the adjacent Terai region. Today, Duars tea retains its British heritage and is regarded as one of the most exquisite tea varieties in the country. We arrived at the beautiful hidden gem Aranya Tourism property at 1.30 pm. This property is managed by West Bengal Tourism. Once we completed the check-in formalities, we headed to our room in the newly constructed brick block of the property. I was impressed with the room quality, which rivals with any 4-star hotel. The spacious room features a TV, AC, electric kettle, modern furnishing and ample seating. Each room also has an attached balcony offering a beautiful view of the Choldapada National Park. And the best part? They have given two Kolbalish for the Kolbalish loving Bengalis. There is a large cupboard for storing your belongings which also includes extra blanket and pillows. The bathroom features sleek modern fittings that exude both style and functionality. Soft ambient lighting completes the look, creating a relaxing and luxurious atmosphere. After a quick shower, we headed for lunch at the in-house AC restaurant. We were quite hungry after the journey and had heard a lot about the excellent food at West Bengal Tourism Properties. We decided to order their thalis, mutton thali for me and chicken thali for Ma. We also wanted to taste the famous Boroli fish of this region. The food had a comforting home-like quality and I found the vegetarian dishes to be particularly enjoyable. The mutton and the Boroli fish however were just average. After having a good meal, we decided to take a walk around the property. 
Along the way, we came across a painted map of Duars that highlighted all the key places in and around the area. The most stunning feature of this property is its meticulously maintained large garden, filled with a variety of beautiful plants and flowers. The standalone cottages are situated around the garden's perimeter. If you are staying here for a few days, it's highly recommended to spend time in this garden, either relaxing with a book or simply soaking in the natural beauty. I'm sure you are going to love it. The cottages are a better choice for travelers with small families. The safari booking office for Jaldapada is conveniently located right next to the resort, offering a significant advantage. In the background, you can see the wooden block, which is about a decade old and shows some signs of wear and tear. Look at how beautiful these flowers are. After lunch, we took a relaxing nap. In the evening, we ordered some tea and biscuits. We wanted to enjoy our tea in the balcony, but it was too hot and humid outside. So after finishing our tea indoors, we stepped out into the balcony. The sun was setting and the forest was gradually coming to life. In the background, we could hear the sound of beetles and peacocks. We made a stop at Jaldapara before continuing to Bhutan as we had a 5-6 to six hour journey to Thimpu the next day. Additionally, we wanted to spend some quality time in the Duars to enjoy the forest. As you noticed, the heat and humidity was still intense even at 8 pm, but it was dinner time so we had to step out. This time we took the scenic route to the restaurant, walking along the back side of our room and through the main garden. Just look at this place. Isn't it heavenly? I really appreciated the fact that the property was using subtle lighting, which didn't cause any inconvenience to the guest and at the same time ensured that the wildlife wasn't disturbed. The silence, punctuated by the sound of the night critters, was the most soothing music I had heard in a long, long time. This is how the property's entrance looked at night. I was not a big fan of this purple lighting, however. A narrow rickety wooden bridge added a dramatic touch to the beautiful forest scene. adventurer spirit wanted to walk across the bridge and explore the area at night. However, the locals advised us not to venture too far as we were still inside the forest zone. After spending some more time outside, we headed to dinner. This time we both opted for the vegetarian thali. I also ordered a katla fish fry on the side. The vegetarian thali was pretty much same to what we had in the afternoon, just that it had two veg preparations instead of one non-veg. I think the alu bhaja, dal and chutney were the best things in their thalis. Given the heat, we also decided to have a lychee drink with our meal. After dinner, we visited their souvenir store which offered wood carved artifacts for sale. There is also a liquor shop available for those interested. Tell me how cute these pugma clamps are. I absolutely love them. We kept walking around the big park, just soaking in the sights and sound of the beautiful night. And believe me, we didn't want to go back into the rooms. The simplicity and beauty of this forest stay, with its unfiltered sounds and sights, provide a rare escape into a world where nature's rhythms set the pace, leaving us rejuvenated and inspired. <laughs>